Hey guys! <laughs> Welcome to episode uh, 7, I believe, of the 1958 TR3 restoration behind us. It's just a body restoration, it's not complete restoration. The owner is gonna finish it. We are only commissioned to do the body. What we've done so far, we replaced both floors inside, the seal on the other side and all that. That side is complete. This side we just finished in the last episode aligning all the panels, the floor and the seal, everything is in place, tucked in place, not welded completely, but tucked in place. It's ready to be welded. We have good gaps here. We fought with them for a while in the last episode, but we did it. We also installed the bonnet and figured out that we have some issues here in the front. It doesn't line up very well with the valance, so we have to deal with that as well. But before I weld everything completely, I want to finish aligning all the panels, which includes also replacing the bottom of this fender here. So I believe that's where we're gonna start today. We have a replacement panel for that. Maybe we're not gonna weld it completely, but at least we're gonna tack it in place so we can have a good gap here. We're gonna install also the outer seal on this side and align it with the door so we can have a good gap there as well. And if we have more time in this video, we're gonna start dealing with the bonnet and with this little gap here that I'm not happy with. As you can see here, it's touching, but here we have like a quarter inch gap. So what I think I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna drill these spot welds and I'm gonna open this a little bit and then we're gonna weld them again. And then we're gonna have to deal with the bonnet, with this curve, with the other curve on the other side, and most importantly, the top of the bonnet, which needs need to match this curve and it is far from that right now so that's the plan let's start changing it now oh that's not the correct line oh let's get crack -a locking okay let's get crack -a locking oh wow there's a storm outside thunderstorm in february that's crazy so this is the back of the fender so there's a step here i think it's called a joggle and we're gonna use it this time like i like butt welding normally because i don't like overlapping metal but here in this long panel it's just gonna warp on us and to cut the fender to that line unfortunately we're gonna have to take it off because of this bracket it is right here you see this bracket inside we can't cut it here because we're gonna cut into this side piece well actually it's not a big deal if it if we cut this piece here we can just weld it after but i think maybe we should cut it without removing it because i don't want to lose the alignment that we have right now so okay let me try and cut it off So it's cut off and I measured here from where the old fender needs to overlap the patch. I measured 12 and a quarter, but because I'm cautious, I decided to cut it half an inch lower. So it is pretty much at this level. It should overlap our new patch a little bit more. We still have another half inch to cut up. I'm just, you know, I'm afraid to cut it at once. So that's where we are. I cut 11 and three quarters instead of 12 and a quarter. And then I decided to test with the new patch, but I discovered a problem, like a serious problem that again answers the question that I am asked every time I patch something. Everybody says, why didn't you just replace it? Or why didn't you just buy a repair patch? This is why because nothing fits everything needs to be modified sometimes it's worth making your own stuff you know so this is the old one and look at the distance from the edge to the bend here so that's 827 tau right yeah look at this 
quarter inch difference an inch and 50 tau almost so the problem is that this flange now is throwing my fender over the door right because this flange needs to be in the front of this flange and when i put it there because we have a quarter inch difference that's overlapping my door now so i don't have many options here on top of it this flange is not welded to this because that's how it is here you see this flange here is welded to this so if you cut these welds you can move it here because it's so much easier they spot welded it right here so i can't even take it out and, and move it unless i drill holes through the entire patch and there's like seven spot welds at least so how am i supposed to deal with that I have to cut the flange here, shorten it by quarter inch and push it that way and weld it again without damaging the outer surface here. Like why? All right, that makes it easier to fit, right? <laughs> Look, they couldn't even paint it first and then weld the flange inside. Anyways, what I did here is we still have this bracket here in the back, right? So that's why I made a cut here so I can now pre-fit this fender. But now we don't know how high it needs to be, that's why I went and I measured on the other side and the distance from the bottom of the door to the bottom of the fender is three and a quarter and here we have it's hard to measure but it is three and three quarters so that tells me that exactly as I expected we need to cut another half inch because I cut this half an inch lower than I was expecting it to be however when I put this part like that I can't raise it by half inch so yeah, now we are at three and a half. We need another quarter inch up. So what's preventing us from going up is this flange here, it hits this. So we need to open it a little bit. And I looked at the old one, and yes, you see how much more open this is? So we're gonna have to open this as well. Yes, I need to mount this vice. Permanently. I have the bolts, I just need to make some bushings because I want to mount it well. I might have made a small mistake here because I didn't realize that this was cut below the jog over here so we might be missing a little bit of the wire here we're gonna have to fill this up with weld i guess there's gonna be a little piece missing ah. if we line this up here perfectly we are a little bit short on this side so this patch is not long enough oh my god at least we have a nice gap here so i'm not gonna fight with it anymore just gonna tuck it together i'm gonna tuck it somewhere here as well and then we're gonna deal with this curve i'm gonna have to add a little bit of weld here let me show you how far out it is you see the difference here so what we're gonna have to do is start welding from here and adding up and filling up this gradually with weld to extend it and because there's a row inside we're gonna have to fix that as well i mean i can't unroll this rolled edge and fix it 
We're gonna have to cheat. Oh my god. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Like I was thinking if we if we have cut this a little bit lower, that was gonna bring the curve a little bit closer to this one, right? We brought it something like that, right? That plunge underneath can be bent or whatever. So you know what we're gonna do? I'm not gonna cut it on the side. I'm just gonna clump it again. And we're gonna pre-fit the outer seal so we can see this one how it is gonna match that one all right here we are with the seal and as we know from the other side the other side needed a little modification and we did modify this rear end i needed a little modification here in the front because of the way the a post is here it is not square and i'm not gonna fight with it i'm not gonna try to make it square because that might affect the position of my door. So that's where it is. So we're not gonna touch the A post anymore. That's why I trimmed a little bit here so it is not square anymore. And now it fits there pretty well, like that, but it doesn't fit here. And that's exactly what we had to do on the other side as well. We had to rebend this flange. But after the fact, after I did it, David actually mentioned to me, he said, there is even a flange there normally, like from the factory. And yeah, that's how it was. We don't need this flange. We can just weld it in the corner here. On the other side, we did it with the flange, but here I think I'm just gonna cut this off. And if we have to make any changes, they're gonna be here later. We're gonna have to match it with the bottom of the door and this line here so the seal is installed but i think i'm gonna have to move the b post again i don't know why this gap became a little bit too big again like it's not huge it is probably 3 16 it's pretty good gap but it is much smaller than the front one and i'd like to keep the front one this way because up there it's Eh, kind of so we have a pretty good gap in the front i want to keep it this way so i might cut these tucks here and move it a little bit forward again i know that's gonna move only the bottom not the top but uh yeah we will see anyway the seal is installed and there's two things here one you see now when i close the door to line up here and here in the middle it is bold like it has a little bow and that's not even the middle that's like the rear end of the door it's not a lot but it's significant and that's what we were talking about on the other side chef tash warned me about that he said that that's how it is originally and the seals don't come this way so maybe we have to modify the seal but for this side everything worked well like maybe there is a very little bow here, like right here, just like on the other side, but it's not that significant. So I decided that I wouldn't do anything here, but on that side, we might need to do it. Well, that's something that we have to decide later, but it looks like we might need to make a slice here or maybe even in the corner. It's gonna give us though, even though we have this step, Still, it's gonna give us the opportunity to open it. Now, here in the front, this step matches perfectly at the top. At the bottom, it's a little bit open. And that's how it is. It is like this on this side. I think it is smaller, the gap here, than on the other side. Yeah, it definitely is. But we'll see, I might be able to move seal a little bit more forward here. I think we have a 16th and the bottom is gonna become a little bit smaller here, but it is what it is. We can't do much about it. Yeah, you see this bend needs to be under the door. So we definitely need to re-bend this like we did on the other side, but we know how to do that anyway. My point is here now, this line, right? We said 
we wanted to see how this line is gonna be so we can decide what to do there so here we have a little step right the seal is a little bit higher than the fender because they overlap so there's always gonna be a little step if I put the ruler here on the bottom of the fender I have this step consistent all the way to there so we can cheat a little bit very little we can bring the front end down the problem is though we're gonna close this gap here and I don't want to that might help a little bit with this but what about here we have a good gap here so that's where I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna weld this this way and we're just gonna add a little bit of weld maybe we can put a piece of rod here and weld it but that's how it is actually this is already lower it lowered itself it opened here so we did lower it a little bit i'm actually pretty happy with that i might cut here a little bit and cheat so we make this more smooth this is the corner that is missing like i said but we're gonna figure it out now this gap became a little bit more like so i shouldn't have cut it even i should have cut on an angle i just cut based on the old thing measured from the bottom up and whatever we can always fill this up no problem so that looks actually not too bad this entire side i'm happy with it oh that looks like that on the <laughs> that looks similar doesn't it clumps all over the place and everything yeah anyway I'm not going to weld anything now, because at the end of the day, I'm going to sleep on it. <laughs> and I'm going to look at it again tomorrow morning. And if everything still looks satisfying to me, I'm just going to tuck this in place. And then uh, we're going to move forward. I'm going to fix this, then the bonnet. Yeah. Okay, so I'll see you in the morning. All right, it's the next day, and when I came... In the garage i didn't like it <laughs> so i ended up cutting off these welds from the bottom of the b post moved the whole b post probably by a 16th or something and i welded the b the bottom of the b post completely here you see <clears throat> it wasn't welded completely here and i think that's what uh, allowed the b post to move back because it was still flexing and i think that looks better now still the gap is a little bit bigger at the top but that i can't do anything about that i mean we can't add any more shims there we can't remove any more shims from here because there's only one i might try to play with the front gap a little bit i don't want to if i only open the top gap here a little bit that's gonna close the top gap here and it's gonna bring the door down and it's gonna come at this point which is much better and now the gap is perfect but that but that opens here right so should we sacrifice this gap for this <laughs> i don't know we will see the rest we're gonna play with the door with shims in the back etc et there i tucked it at the front end as well and it turns out we cut it a little bit too high but that's on me but now when i'm looking at this gap actually looks like i still need to bring it back up so i don't know i'm gonna let this sit for a while i'm gonna do something else and i'm gonna go come back to it with a little bit of a fresh view on it if i have to i'm gonna cut those tacks and i'm gonna lift it very little up here so we can open a little bit this gap at the bottom and close that there anyway i'm gonna leave it for a while I'm gonna come here now and deal with that part. I'm gonna drill these spot welds and try to open this now. I put you on time-lapse mode because I thought that was gonna take forever to drill those spot welds and to open. Didn't take much. So now I regret that I didn't put you on regular mode because as I was drilling, it just went pop and <laughs> went where it's supposed to be on its own i didn't even do anything because there's this fastener here inside right that's pushing it towards the fender 
it doesn't even need any more than that it's good where it is that's where we need to weld it but you know what i'm not gonna rush with welding it let's deal with the bonnet as well now that's the biggest issue that i have because we never know what's gonna have to happen who knows maybe we're gonna decide to move the two fenders and the valance together in that direction i mean it's hard because the valance is fastened here and all that but it's not impossible if we have to do that as well we're gonna do it but i'm really happy with this now it was such a simple solution <laughs> all right let's see what we're gonna do with this brace here now okay so here remember how the bonnet wasn't going all the way down and i was planning to space the latch down well i'm stupid it's just this pin wasn't falling inside this hole on the bonnet because the bonnet was a little bit off to the side because i made the center of the bonnet match to the center of the valance i offset it a little bit to that side and now the pin falls into the hole i know we can move the latch too but we will decide what we're gonna do the thing is now that i moved it to the side now i can close the bonnet here just the spring is pushing it back up but i have to figure out how to keep it there so we can continue with this that though because we shifted it to the side closed this gap a little bit it was pretty big but of course it opened the other one and now this one is pretty big as well but this is way too much that's more than half an inch here and more than half an inch here and i know you're gonna tell me that tr3s were not great out of the factory but i just don't like it so i still think we have to do something plus we need to do something because the levels don't match i'll put a pair of vice grips here on the pin so it keeps it down and then i'm gonna show you what i'm talking about that's what i'm talking about now that it is level here where the latch is you see how much lower it goes here maybe you're gonna see it better from this side see how much lower it goes here so this brace that's inside if we make a cut on it to the u shape that is actually the structural part and we just leave the flat surfaces i believe we're gonna be able to bend the bonnet open a little bit here and then maybe make another cut right under this curve here and open it a little bit back and that not only is going to bring the levels to the same level but it also is going to stretch a little bit the length and it's going to make this gap even if it becomes as big as here i will be more than happy here it is like an eight bigger one eight which i believe we can achieve by leveling the front end and you know we also have a trim here a bead that's also gonna close the gap a little bit and i think it's gonna look nice now here it goes down right here in the center and then it goes back up of course in the first place we need to make sure that the valance is actually in the right place and it has nice curves because now we are adjusting the bonnet to it right and i'm pretty happy with the valance with its curve I want the bonnet to look like the valance, not the other way around, right? So again, if we make a cut here in the brace, not through the bonnet, we're gonna be able to bend the bonnet like this a little bit and raise this end. And I think that's where we're gonna have to reassess again and see what's gonna happen. I think we should do this, this and this cut, or maybe just one as a beginning to see if it is gonna work at all. But if that works, then we can do the same here. We can make a cut here raise this end make a cut here lower this end and that's gonna also release some of the length here that is taken from all these curves and that's gonna be great and that's my plan for fixing the two gaps because again this side is a little bit narrower there a little bit wider here here i i would like to open it a little bit more or should i try to move the bonnet it used to be good now it's not look at that that actually moves easier than i expected 
so I'm happy. Something important that I learned that a friend of mine taught me long time ago, the guy who taught me how to weld. If you weld something on a door, whether it's a car door or your home door or something that's on hinges at all, put the ground on the actual thing that you're welding. Don't make the ground go through the hinges because that's gonna ruin them. Unfortunately, my friend passed away, but I'm sure he's watching from up there. Hopefully he's proud of me. I think I closed it a little bit. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. raised it a little but we need a little bit more so I'm gonna make that cut a little bit wider and bend it more. The important part is that it works. Okay so now that I lift it up we maybe we should make the other cut here. That might be a little bit too much, but you know what, I'll try. I'll tuck it and again, if we have to, we're gonna cut it. <laughs> Not the best position for cutting and welding, but it works. So this looks better now. From here to here it's perfect, from here to here, here maybe, it's a little bit too high but it's gonna go low, but now this is where we made the cut and what happened was, huh, interesting, instead of bringing this up, we brought this down, dun dun dun, then what we have to do is, we have to release the bonnet, align this here, the same height as the fender, both sides, and then we have to play with the center so we can bring the center up and down because you see what's happening, this stays where it is, this goes up and down. Okay, that's what we have to do. This is aligned now, this is pretty much aligned. We're gonna have to deal with this separately, we're gonna have to make a small cut here and try to bend only this part which is gonna be incredibly hard because this from here to here looks like a straight line where you see here we have a nice curve. So just here at the end we have to make a cut somehow. So now what we have to do is start bringing this down the same way we brought this down. You know what I mean? We brought this down so now you can see actually here this is pretty much good. We have to start bringing the center down with, again with cuts. Hmm. Okay, let's try the same here. It looks like this is a very aggressive curve here compared to the valence curve. And that was the case here. And now they're pretty much the same. So, okay, I'll do this here again. You're not even seeing what I'm doing here. Okay, that's actually not too bad. So that went a little bit too low, but I'm gonna leave it there for now. And I'm gonna make now, <laughs> looks like I shouldn't have made this cut in the middle, or at least shouldn't have bent it so much. So you know what, actually, let's try to straighten this. We know from our template that this is a little bit too aggressive compared to the other side. So let's try to straighten this. It's 
Somebody's gonna have to grind these cuts after, right? <laughs> Welding them is gonna be easy, but grinding them is gonna be fun. Okay. I know, that was expected. It's getting there. So we have to keep in mind that what holds this bonnet down are these two pins, right? They go into another part underneath. I don't know what it's called and you get it twisted and that's what holds it underneath. In the center we have the spring that is trying to push it down. So that's what we have to mock up here. We have to push it and pretend that it is held in both sides to this level. I don't have the bottom parts. I wish I did. Maybe I have them on my car. I don't know. But anyway, let's... So height-wise, I'm pretty happy now with all the way here and all the way to here. So we need to continue bringing this down. So I'm going to make three cuts. One here, the center that we already have and closed. Now I'm going to have to open it to back, back to where it was. And I'm going to make one more here right after the latch. And when we open these a little bit, that's going to bring this down. So I'm not going to hold you for this. I'm going to do it on my own and I'll bring you back. But just so you know, this gap is getting better. And this gap is getting better. So my plan worked. We are literally expanding the bonnet sideways. <laughs> All right. So three more slices here. How many do we have now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, it's not too bad. We need to make them look great inside again because, oh my God, how am I gonna grind this? I don't know. <laughs> we have to make it look nice inside too because you see when it, the bonnet is open, that's right in front of your eyes. But anyway, let's see what it's gonna look like now. Okay. So like we said, the two ends need to be down. <laughs> look at that. I'm more than happy with that. Actually, this one stays where it is. This one, if I let go, it goes up. But again, this is what's going to keep it down, right? How do I keep it like that so I can bring you here to see? Okay, when we hold this down, look at this now. Upside down. You're going to look at it upside down. Good. Are you dizzy now? Okay, it looks good. The gap, this one is, eh, it's wider than what I want it to be. But you know what? I think for a TR3, it's perfect. <laughs> I mean, it's about 3 eighths. And what we said in the previous video, 3 eighths is, I would be happy with 3 eighths. Now this goes down, but when I press on this here, this moves, you see? And when I line it up there, this lines up here. And this gap is also about 3 eighths now. How do I keep this down? I'm going to put something heavy here. You know what this is? This is my TR4, TR3 crank seal alignment tool. You don't see it? It's inside this. I just need to remove from this chunk with that machine over there everything that doesn't look like this too and leave only the two inside anyway okay let's line it up like this okay that's pretty good and now this is good and this gap is good still a little bit more closed in the back but that's actually a quarter inch here i wish all the gaps were like that but we don't have any more material to take from anywhere. Maybe a little bit from here. Can we steal a little bit more from here? If we straighten this the same way we straighten that, is that gonna give us this eighth of an inch here? It will. And if we manage to do that, 
we're gonna have a quarter inch gap here and three eighths gap here, which means that we can move the bonnet by one sixteenth and we're gonna have five sixteenths here and five sixteenths on the other side. And we're gonna fix a little bit this, this bothers me. If we move the bonnet a lot, that's gonna mess up the gaps again completely. Okay, now that bothers me. Anyway, let's do this. Oh my God. <laughs> if these are not the perfect gaps, I don't know. What do you think, guys? I love it. Now this end is higher for whatever reason. Now when I press this down a little bit, that one raises. So, uh, you know what? Let's take our two, put it gently here, yeah. Maybe a little bit more leverage, okay. Now it's level. So again, this is what's gonna hold it in the future. But I've raised this end here a little bit way too much. But look, this, the height of this is perfect everywhere. Now, I also moved the bonnet very little this way and that improved here. So that's the only thing now that bugs me. And here in the back, when the bonnet is higher than the scuttle. <sighs> what do you think? Should we start dealing with that now? I don't know. And of course, this gap here is horrible. What I think is the valance, for whatever reason, is like I can see, it's a bowl and it comes out here. Here, at least in this direction, the bonnet is good. If anything, this should go that way. It looks like it also has a little bowl. Because if I line it up in the center here, no, actually the, the bonnet is perfect. But if you look at the valance, it's a bowl. It's thick has an opening here and an opening at the other end. Is that how it's supposed to be? If we only had another valance that we could compare it with. Dun, dun, dun. I took my wall art down. It is perfectly straight here, just like the bonnet. Yeah, there is a little bit of a ball, but not as much as on the car. Did you figure already what's next? So you see here, this is just a flange that we can easily move. I mean, we're gonna have to make a cut, move and all that. But we're gonna need to also play with this bracket a little bit. So if we make a cut from here somewhere, so this means the bracket starts right here. There's the same crack as on mine right here. So this is where the bracket starts. If we cut the top layer of the sheet metal, Starting from here, we're gonna have to cut also the bracket a little bit. We can do a lot here because of this distance from here to here. You see, this is pretty much equal now. Let's measure that's the distance now. It's pretty much the same on the other side. What is it on mine? Does this mean that mine is also gonna be a disaster? <laughs> Eventually, yeah, like it is way too bad, you know what I mean? If it is like this, well, whatever, it's kind of okay. 3 sixteenths, here it's 1 sixteenths, so one eight difference between here and here, you can tell me it's a TR3, okay. TR3s have never been good from the factory. I know, okay, but what about here, from 1 sixteenth to half inch, that's not okay. <laughs> I know, I know, we were dealing with the front end and all of the sudden I'm cutting the rear end. Are you saying it was going to be easier to make a new bonnet? Maybe. So, 
If we push it down, then will it like that? Ah, still higher here. That also opens it here, do you see here? That also help, helps here, you see? Dun, dun, dun. Making the gap even smaller now. Now we have to make it smaller in the front too. So everything comes in place. So all the problems of this bonnet were coming from the two braces. If these two braces were bent to the right shape in the factory, everything was gonna be perfect. How do we weld it like that now? How do we keep it there? Figured out how to keep it down, but how do we weld it now? <laughs> but look at that now. Now it's perfect actually. There's on both sides, there's a little gap because right here it is touching, but here it's not touching the bonnet. But you see, it is perfectly good. However, now we need to weld it somehow. Oh my God. You're thinking what I'm thinking? Ay, ay, ay. Welcome to the underside. This, by the way, like I said, helps a lot with this. The other side though, is pretty bad. <laughs> so it opened a lot. It starts opening from up there. I don't want to do the covers for the hinges, but so what we can do is again make one more slice. Yes, we are gonna, gonna keep, we're gonna keep slicing because now the gap is still good, but it's high. I mean, this became high. We see. We want to bring it down, and that's how we're gonna bring it down by making a cut here. We're gonna bring it down, and this is gonna line up pretty well but that's gonna bring it way too far in. And then by making another cut here somewhere, we're gonna be able to open it again and bring it out to the same width of the gap, but lower. Let's deal with this first. Okay. Oh, I hope I'm taking everything that I need. Ground welder helmet. See you, bye. Oh. Wow, that's impossible. Maybe not. <laughs> I feel like in a submarine or in a tank. I wish I took a light with me. <laughs> okay, too late. No lights. Where do we put the ground now? <sighs> I don't know what you're laughing at. I didn't take welding pliers, and I'm going to need them, probably. <laughs> oh! I'm burning. All right. I think we're good. Hello from the underside. <laughs> oh my god. They were calling me the mosquito as a kid. That was my nickname because I was skinny. Well, I don't complain about it. I need to buy more socket sets. Pretty handy. No doubt that, that flexed flexed back. Huh. How did it flex back? Oh no! I'm gonna try to cut it again. Here this side is great. This stayed where we wanted it but this last cut maybe I didn't weld it properly? I don't know. I'm gonna try to cut it again but this time I'm gonna weld it from here. Well, I guess what happened was, as I was welding it, and the weld pulled it again, because I want it open, right? So, I'm gonna cut it again. Okay, we brought it back. It's not perfect everywhere, but you know what, for this much, well, 
All right, we are getting there. So I'm happy with how it fits here now. It's pretty good. We have a nice gap. Meanwhile, Mr. Sheftash messaged me and he said that if, uh, because he watched my previous video, and he said that if this gap is too small, there's a chance that the flap here that goes up and down is uh, gonna catch with the bonnet. So I think though we have a pretty good gap here. So it's not that tight. This is now pretty much okay. I don't think we should touch it. It doesn't match perfectly, but you know what? I think we're becoming a little bit too petty. Like you see here only at the bottom, it comes out a little bit, but eh, you know. So this gap, I'm more than happy with it. I'm more than happy with this gap. I'm more than happy with the shape of the bonnet and the valance, how they match here. Not happy with this gap. So that we're gonna deal with later and not happy with this. So let's deal with this now. See, it happened on its own. I love it. But we need to move it forward. So that's gonna help also with the gap in the front. It's gonna screw up this one. Oh my God, everything is came down on its own, like I barely bent it. It's not welded yet. I just barely bent with the two cuts with my fingers and exactly what I expected happened. It went down and this part came back in. So we still have a good gap here. However, as we were moving the bonnet to align this gap, something else happened here. The front, this gap became too big I'm happy with the back over there, but here I'm not happy, and here I'm not happy now, it became too narrow. But the bonnet is where we want it, right? I don't want to touch it anymore. And something else happened here, this pin doesn't go inside the hole anymore. So, just theoretically, what if we are able to move this fender, this valance, and this fender together as a unit that way. Is that even possible? I don't know. So the valance is held to the fenders. I don't need to loosen anything at all. But the fenders, I think I have a screw. Yeah, oh, okay. That we need to fix eventually. But yeah, if I loosen these and the ones on the other side, that's gonna allow the whole thing to shift a little bit that way. Then we're gonna have a problem with the holes on the valance. These holes, I mean, they're not gonna match, but <laughs> we can either oval these two holes and these two holes on the bar and move the bar that way, or we can oval these holes. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes and still let it match. So let me see if that's even possible. Wow, I should have shown you that. I just went like this with my hand and everything moved after I loosened the bolts, of course. Now these holes don't match anymore. And these don't match. So we're gonna have to oval holes and all the fenders and everything, but you see how it moves? <laughs> okay, let's close the bonnet and then see what we want to do with that. Okay, we're back to normal. Happy with this gap, happy with this gap. So all we need to do is oval some holes, but I think we are where we are. So we shifted the whole front end of the body sideways. <laughs> Maybe that's where it was supposed to be anyway. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna weld these two cuts here because 
now I'm pretty happy with how this fits, happy with this gap, happy with this gap, happy with everything else other than this gap. But as we were adjusting that gap over there, look at this now. That looks pretty, pretty good. I mean, good gap here and good, good gap down there at the end, which means we need to fix the center part, not the outside, which means that this is not a problem here anymore. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a cut from all the way from here to the same place on the other side, maybe quarter inch away from the corner, and we're going to just move this line. And then we're going to have really good gap here. I'm actually pretty happy with where we are right now. <laughs> Okay, so these two cuts here are welded now and everything still looks good. We still have good gaps. So now let's deal with this. And it is, this is gonna be trickier than what we think it is because of this holding bracket inside, the bracket that holds it to the tube inside, the cross member or whatever it is. We need to cut through the bracket as well if we want to push the whole thing. Or we can cheat and just cut the top and bend this back. We have to literally bend it back. So then this corner here is not going to be 90 degree, which it is not 90. It is acute a little bit now. So we're going to push it so it becomes 19 and even further. And that's going to mean that here outside we're going to have a good gap but the flange that goes down is gonna be like, it's gonna go towards the bonnet again, but that doesn't really matter. All I care about is the surface to be good. Underneath, the gap is still not gonna be great, but who cares about that, right? So let's go ahead and cut it. <laughs> we cut the whole car in pieces and we tucked it back together. <laughs> I'm gonna start tucking it in place. You see here, I like the gap. The problem is I need to be able to push from underneath with something. I can reach like that. So for the height, we are not looking at the bonnet. The bonnet is only giving us reference for the width of the gap. For the height, we follow the height of this piece that remained attached to the bar inside, right? I'm gonna make some kind of a tool here for this gap so I don't need to hold the screwdriver and then with one hand underneath I'm gonna lift and I'm gonna tack on top. Who said TR3s didn't have good gaps out of the factory? Not out of the Rusty Beauties factory. We have a perfect gap here now. Somebody just needs to weld this and grind it. <laughs> this now is closed. This now is matching pretty well. This now is matching here. This is also matching. This here is matching. And eh, maybe this is a little bit higher than this but we're gonna pretend that we didn't see that the height of the whole gap here is matching and the width of the gap is pretty much matching okay you're gonna have to close your eyes about this here i mean you saw i cut it only to here but at some point i realized that i have to cut it a little bit more here so we extended this part here by you see how much so that's the thickness of the blade plus a little bit more. 
probably it's like a 30 second of an inch longer than that side but nobody's gonna notice that but we needed to close this gap a little bit here so i cut it all the way to here and moved it out so i am really really happy with all the bonnet gaps now so i don't know how long this video is gonna be it might be like an hour and a half <laughs> but i am gonna leave it in one video because there's so many things that if i split it in two videos it's not gonna make too much sense so when i'm editing i'm gonna try to keep it short i mean i'm gonna cut all the unnecessary parts out to make it short but it still might be a little bit too long so let me not ramble here at the end of the video so we can put an end to it so thank you for watching guys thanks for commenting subscribing and sharing supporting the channel and i'll see you in the next one bye